welcome and thank you for joining us for our online service today. If you are watching us for the first time, Karibu Sana, this is ICC Tengela, the place for connection and transformation to experience God's love. Following the directive by His Excellency the President and the Interfaith Council recommendations on 26th of 2021, it is our duty as a church to comply and cooperate with the government to ensure health and safety of our congregation and community. We therefore temporarily suspend all our in-person services and meetings effective today. Therefore, we will not gather for our physical services, Tuesday prayer services, our ropes camp that was to happen next month, and our connect groups until further notice. However, we will congregate online on our media platforms, that is Facebook, YouTube, and our website. Oh yes, we have content for all ages. Pasi, yes. you know this is a very challenging time for us as a country, mm -hmm. but all hope is not lost. Yes, all hope is not lost. Let's keep the faith. The word of God in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Amen and amen. Let's not be anxious about what's happening, but let's pray about it. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we worship you, Adonai, we worship you, our God, because you reign, and you reign over everything. And so this morning, Father, our hearts are comforted, knowing that, Father, you are in control, and that, God, you will quiet us with your love and with your peace. Thank you for our online viewers. I just want to speak uh, the grace of God upon us as a nation and even as a church during this time. And even as we go into worship, I thank you, God, because your presence is with us. You will guide us and you will speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Indeed, he's an awesome God. Amen. He raised from the dead. Yes. And today he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it awesome to be in the presence of God? Yes. Let us give him a mighty show.
trust in God, amen? Amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together like this. Hallelujah. Your love is higher than the mountain tops. Your strength, a river that would ever stop. Your mercy is endless, covers every wrong. You are always and forever God. Help me sing it out. Your, Your love, love is higher hey. than the mountain tops. Your strength, a river. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, that is our confession this morning. That is our declaration, oh God, as we gather on this online platform, Father, we are here to confess and declare that we'll agree with your word, oh God. We will agree with your word concerning who you have said we are in you, our Father. We will agree with your word concerning who you are in our lives, oh God. We will agree with your word concerning our situations, my Father, because the Bible says you are working in all things for the good of them that love you, and they are called according to your purpose. You are the Father to the fatherless. You are the God who hears our cry. You are our present help in time of need, our defense, our rock, our salvation, our fortress, our secure refuge. We have no other God but you. And so, Father, help us to agree with your word that when we look around us, my Father, and we see every reason to doubt your power, and we see every reason to be anxious, my God, help us to agree with your word concerning our lives, that you have good plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. We honor you. We bless you, our Father. Thank you for this opportunity, Jehovah, to hear your word, to worship you, Jehovah, to be ministered to by you, and even, Lord, to interact on this platform. We are grateful. May you bless us, O God, even as we have gathered online. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for choosing to join us this morning for our service and choosing our platforms to be the avenue of which you'll be ministered to today. We believe the Lord is here to minister to you in the name of Jesus. My name is John Kimani, one of the pastors here at ICC Kitengela, serving under the leadership of Reverend Twini and William Odero. The Old Rugged Cross is a popular hymn written in 1912 by evangelist and songwriter and leader George Bernard. And it speaks of the writer's adoration of Christ and his sacrifice at Calvary. It is in listening to that song that I got the title for today's message, which is Cherishing the Cross. And I encourage you to listen to that song when you have time. Allow me to give us the reading of today. Our reading comes from Matthew 27, 32 to 46, and I'm reading from the NIV version. You can follow up with whichever version you have. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine, wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Verse 38, two thieves were crucified with him, one on, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the thieves who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. When you look at the sufferings of Jesus at the cross, one question will come to your mind, why? Why did Jesus have to suffer so much? Why did they do it to him? Or rather you can ask, why did he do it for us? Because we understand that Jesus went on the cross for you and for me. Once you fully grasp the answer to those two questions, your life will never be the same again. You will come to appreciate the cross. You will come to embrace the cross. You will come to cherish the cross. And you will come to cling to the cross of Jesus. This morning, we are going to look at why we need to cherish the cross of Jesus. We have just come from doing the series, Returning to God. And as we usher in the Easter season, we would like to turn our attention to the cross because we return to God through what Christ did for us at the cross. It is through the cross that we return to God. So why do we need to cherish the cross? 
I want to submit to us four reasons why we need to cherish the cross. Number one, we need to cherish the cross because Jesus bore the full pain of the cross. Number two, we need to cherish the cross because Jesus bore the full shame of the cross. Number three, we need to cherish the cross because Jesus bore the full insult of the cross. And number four, we need to cherish the cross because Jesus bore the full penalty of your sins and my sins at the cross of Calvary. Jesus bore the full pain of the cross, number one. Here we are talking about the physical pain that Jesus experienced at the cross. How did Jesus bear the full pain of the cross? Number one, he used up all his strength. The first thing we learn from our text is that Jesus used up all his strength on his way to the cross. Verse 32 says, as they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. At first, you might read this verse and think just the opposite. You might think that Jesus didn't use up all his strength on the way to the cross because someone helped him carry the cross for him. But that is not what is happening here, friends. The reason the soldiers forced Simon to carry the cross was because Jesus couldn't carry the cross any further. He had used up all his strength. Remember, Jesus has been up all night. He hasn't slept. He was taken violently in the middle of the night, transferred from court to court, and he was tried unjustly both before Caiaphas and Pilate. Jesus has been beaten, stricken, afflicted, and had a crown of thorns pushed down into his head. As if that was not enough, Jesus has already carried the cross a considerable distance. You see, the Romans made sure that the condemned person carried their own cross to the place of crucifixion or execution. The upright section of the cross would already be in the ground waiting for the person condemned. But the person would carry the crossbar section uh, through the city. And as if that was not enough, the Romans, to ensure that this was an example to any other person, they ensured that you did not take the direct route. They wanted to make a public example of you, so you took the long way as they led you around the city streets, so as many people as possible could see you on your way to your own execution. You were supposed to carry your cross all the way to the end, and there is only one reason these soldiers would have forced someone else to carry the cross for Jesus. Jesus had used up all his strength. I imagine he had stumbled many times going through the city, and each time they forced him to keep going. But Jesus finally reached a breaking point. No matter how much they yelled at him, no matter how much they kicked him, no matter how much they whipped him, no matter how much they flogged him, no matter how much they tried to get him up to take the cross, Jesus could not do it any further. He had used up every ounce of strength and every degree of strength. And so they forced Simon to carry the cross for him. He bore the full pain of the cross. How else did Jesus bore the full pain of the cross? He refused to dull the pain. They came to a place called Gogotha, the Bible says, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. You see, friends, the cross inflicted such excruciating pain that the condemned prisoner was often given a mixture of wine to drink to help deaden the pain. When they arrived at Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, either because it resembled a skull or simply because it was a place of execution, they offered Jesus this mixture, but he refused to drink it. When you or I just get a pain or a headache, we reach out for aspirin or we reach out for maramoja if you're in Kenya or Panadol or whichever painkiller to try to deaden the pain. But because Jesus wanted to bear the full pain of the cross, he went to the cross with all of his senses fully alert. He went to the cross with all of his nerve endings fully functional. He bore the full pain of the cross. And because he bore the full pain of the cross, I submit to us, Cherish the cross. Number two, Jesus bore the full shame of the cross. Here we are talking about emotional suffering. We experience many negative emotions in life, but perhaps none is as devastating as the emotion of, sh of shame. Have you ever felt shame, real shame, 
Someone has rightfully said that whereas guilt has to do with what I have done, shame on the other hand has to do with who I am. Shame cuts right to the core of one's identity and self-worth. It is a horrible, stiffing, crippling feeling. How did Jesus bear the full shame of the cross? First, they took his clothing. The Bible says when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. If private shame can be considered as bad enough, then we could say that public shame is the worst form of shame and most crippling of all. The death of Jesus was a public humiliating death. When they took away his clothing, they took away his dignity. They exposed his nakedness for all to see. They divided up his clothes by casting lots, and then they sat down to keep watch over him. What amount of shame. How else did Jesus bear the shame? They mocked his true identity. He had his true identity mocked. The Bible says that above he said they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. This was the written charge, the reason why Jesus was condemned. The Romans would first hang this charge around the person's neck while he carried his cross through the city streets. Then they would nail it to the cross above his head so that everyone could see why are they being crucified. This exposed their crime and served as a warning to others. The charge against Jesus was a simple declaration that this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. This served as a warning to any other will be kings in the Roman Empire. Is it it interesting that Jesus was condemned because of who he was? The ironic thing about this is that he was actually the king of the Jews. He was a promised Messiah. If you remember angel Gabriel coming to Mary and telling Mary that you shall call him Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus came to save us from our sins. This sign was a cruel mockery of his true identity, and he did not resist. How else did Jesus bear the shame of the cross? By being crucified between two thieves. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. This is a shame of false accusation and association. Have you ever been falsely accused? Have you ever had your reputation smeared? Have you ever been pronounced guilty by association? And you wanted so much to clear your name. Probably you said, I'm not like that. Or I didn't do that. Or you said, I'm not like what they are saying or what they are alleging. Or probably you said, I've never done that since I was born. And the list can go on. Jesus was an innocent man. He had done no wrong. He did not deserve to die. And yet they crucified him between two thieves as though he were a common criminal himself. And the most interesting thing is that Jesus did not resist. He was simply doing the Father's will. It is Ray Boltz in his song, I Pledge Allegiance to the Lamb, where he says, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb of God who bore my pain, who wore my shame, and who took my place. The cross was a shameful death, and Jesus bore the full shame of the cross. If you have ever felt shame, if you are going through shame, I want to submit to us, take heart. Jesus knows all about shame. He knows what it feels to go through shame, and Jesus died to take away your shame and my shame so cherish the cross number three why do we need to cherish the cross because jesus bore the full insult of the cross here we are talking about relational suffering physical and emotional suffering are bad but when you are completely abandoned by your friends when you are cut off from all support and comfort and subjected to the towns and the insults of your enemies the wounds only can cut much deeper Matthew tells us there were three groups of people who insulted Jesus at the cross. Number one, those who passed by hurled insults at him. The Bible says those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. Remember the death of Jesus was a public execution. And so the people came out to watch him die. The charge about destroying the temple came up at Jesus' trial. And apparently word had leaked out that the man who was claiming to be the son of God to destroy the temple and build it in, these, in three days was going to be crucified and executed. Remember it was a fake charge then and it's still a fake charge now. Jesus never said he was going to destroy the temple. He was basically speaking of his body, which would be broken on the cross, which was actually what was happening. The people cried out, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. He was the son of God. He could have come down from the cross had he chosen to. Imagine the scenario if Jesus 
could have chosen to come down from the cross at that particular moment. Satan used the same line of attack when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from the temple. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 and verse 6. It didn't work then and it didn't work on the cross. Jesus was the son of God. He could have turned the stones to bread. He could have jumped from the temple and been protected. And he could have come down from the cross if he chose to. But he didn't because he was doing the father's will. He was paying for my sin sins and your sins. The religious leaders mocked him. The Bible says that he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. And you can read that in Matthew 27, 41 to 43. You know, those words were meant to be an insult to Jesus, but they were actually a testimony of Jesus' saving love because Jesus had indeed come to save others. And he could only save others by himself dying on the cross. By not saving himself, that was the only way he could have saved others. When they said he is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and we'll believe in him. Once again, these words were spoken as an insult. But they contained the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Jesus was the king of Israel. And yes, they probably would have believed in him if he came down from the cross. But then Jesus could not have saved them. They said he trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I'm the son of God. Jesus was attacked at the point of his sonship once again. Yes, God the Father wanted the son. Yes, God could have rescued him at any point. But God the Father and God the Son together chose the cross so that you and I could be saved. How else did Jesus bear the full insult of the cross? The thieves heaped insults on him. This was very interesting. You would think if anyone would have sympathy for Jesus on the cross, it would be the two thieves who are being crucified with him. They say misery loves company and, that's, and that there is solidarity in suffering. But even the thieves who were crucified with Jesus, they were hurling insults at him and he did not respond because he was bearing the full insult of the cross for you and me. So my brother, my sister, cherish the cross. Number four, why do we need to cherish the cross? Jesus bore the full penalty for sin at the cross. How did he bear the full penalty for sin at the cross? Here we are talking about spiritual suffering. He was forsaken by God, verse 45 to 46. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, the Bible says darkness came over the land. And at that point, Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The sixth hour until the ninth hour was probably in our day, 12 noon to 3 o'clock. That is considered the brightest part of the day. And for these three hours, darkness came over all the land. The darkness was a visible sign of God's judgment and rather against sin being poured out on Jesus at the cross. All the other sufferings were merely a preliminary. Jesus' real suffering began now in earnest in these three hours. For three hours, Jesus suffered the wrath of God and the judgment of God for the sins of mankind. In just three hours, Jesus suffered an eternity of punishment for our sins, past, present, and future. The depth of Jesus' spiritual suffering is reflected in his cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No wonder the Bible says in Isaiah 59 too, that the hand of the Lord is not too short to save, neither is his ear too dull to hear. But our sins have separated us from our God. Our sins have hidden his face from us. And so to speak on Calvary, when Jesus was receiving the full punishment of our sins, when our sins were heaped upon him, God could not look at him the same way because now he had become sin and he was being punished because of the sins of mankind. This was the suffering Jesus foretold to his disciples. This was the suffering Jesus dreaded in the Garden of Gethsemane when he pleaded with the Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. But you and I know that this was the suffering for which Jesus came. No wonder he said, not my will, but your will be done. And this is why Jesus stayed on the cross, even when his enemies taunted him to come down. 
How else did Jesus bear the full penalty for our sins at the cross? He paid the full price for all our sins. Isaiah 53, the Bible says, verse 4 to verse 6, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Bible also says in 1 Peter 3.18 that Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous to bring us back to God. He was put to death in the body but made alive by the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that God made him who knew no sin to be seen. So that we who knew no righteousness will become the righteousness of God. Jesus was not a sinner. He had not committed any sin, but he died so that you and I will be counted as the righteousness of God. Jesus paid the full price for all our sins when he suffered and died at the cross. Jesus is the infinite God-man, and his sacrifice was more than sufficient to cover every sin of every man and woman who has ever lived, who is living, and who will ever live. Glory be to him. His name. Jesus bore the full penalty for sin at the cross. So I encourage you and I charge you, cherish the cross because at the cross Jesus bore the full penalty of your sin and my sins at the cross. As we come to the end of our message this morning, we go back to where we began. Why did Jesus have to suffer so much? Why did Jesus have to suffer so much? The answer is clear. That the greatest suffering occurred at the cross because the greatest price was paid at the cross. When Jesus paid for your sin and my sin, that was the greatest price that was paid at the cross. Jesus' suffering at the cross shows you how much God loves you. It shows you the great love of God the Father who sent his son to suffer and die in your place. It shows you the great love of Jesus the Son who came to suffer and die in your place and in my place. It was my sins and your sins that put Jesus on the cross. And so Jesus' suffering demands a response of repentance and faith from all who hear about the amazing sacrifice he made for you and for me. My brother, my sister, it is time to cherish the cross. It is time to embrace the cross. It is time to cling to the cross of Jesus. For Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. I, owe, I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. We are living in times when the cross is treated as a symbol of fashion and decoration. But you and I ought to know better after listening to this message. The next time you see the cross, may it remind you of Jesus bearing the full pain. May it remind you of Jesus bearing the full shame. May it remind you of Jesus bearing the full insult. And may it remind you of Jesus bearing the full penalty of your sin and my sin at the cross. Because the cross represents what Jesus did for us. If it were not for the cross, we would not be here. We are believers because of the cross. The church the church exists because of the cross. The church has victory because of the cross. So cherish the cross, my brother and my sister. And as we come to the end, I want to pray with you. You have been listening to this message and you have never given your life to Christ. Or probably you gave your life to Christ and along the way you fell and you backslid and now you no longer follow the path of life. I want to tell you that same Jesus that hung on the tree. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Today your life can be turned around by turning your eyes to Jesus and looking to the cross. And so if you are that person, I want you to repeat after me this prayer. You are there and you are saying, yes, I believe that Jesus died for me. I have never seen it that way, that Jesus bore the shame, bore the insult, bore the pain and the penalty for my sin. I want Jesus now. I want to pray with you. Repeat after me. 
Say, dear Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that you rose again to give me life in eternity. This day I turn my life over to you. Be my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. And help me to lead a victorious Christian living. Amen. If you have made that prayer, go ahead and interact with us on our platforms. You can type saved and you put your number there and we'll reach out to you and we want to walk with you in this journey. Welcome to the kingdom of God. I want to pray for you who is going through pain or shame or insult. You have heard that Jesus at the cross, he bore the full pain of the cross. He bore the full shame. He bore the full insult and the penalty of my sin and your sin. Jesus understands your shame. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. He is able because he was tempted in every way just as we are and yet never sinned. At times we are tempted and we sin, but he was tempted and never sinned so that he can give us power to overcome the things that we go through. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for my viewers, Lord, the people who have been watching and listening this message. Some of them are going through shame right now. Some of them are going through insults because of their faith. Some of them, Lord, are going through physical pain in their body and they have heard Jesus how you bore the full pain of the cross, the full shame of the cross, the full insult of the cross and the full penalty of our sins at the cross. Today as they look to you, would you heal them, Lord? Would you heal them of their physical suffering? Would you heal them of their emotional suffering? Would you heal them of their relational suffering? Would you heal them of their spiritual suffering because you are our healer. We thank you, we bless you because of the healing you have released upon your people and the testimonies we are going to receive of what you have done through this message, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for joining us for this service. If you have made that prayer and the Lord is ministering to you right now, interact with us. Tell us how the message, how you're interacting with the message and how the Lord has ministered to you. May the Lord bless you and may we continue engaging in this work of faith, trusting our God and our Savior. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor John, for bringing God's word to us this morning, reminding us to cherish the cross. May the Lord bless you. And now, church, it's time for us to give, and our ways of giving are on your screen. You can give by sending to our pay bill number 567935, account name you designate, tithes, offerings, or any other form of giving. Or you can do a bank transfer, that is NCBA Bank, account name International Christian Center, Account number is 100-477-8298, NCBA Center Branch, and the bank code is 07000. And if you're writing a check, checks are written to International Christian Center. The Lord bless you as you give. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, this morning we want to worship you with our tithes and offerings. I pray that you will bless every hand that, you'll, that will give. May you keep uh, watching over them, may you keep blessing the work of our hands. And we also recognize that we have those who may not be able to give. Father, would you also remember them? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
We have now come to the end of our service today. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. And now may the God of all hope fill your hearts with joy and peace in believing. May he keep you, may he watch over you, may he protect you, and may his joy be your strength. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you.